What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys one of the most fun decks and that is Crusadia. But in today's video, it's not just going to be a fun build of Crusadia, it's going to be a meta build. This is a very competitive build of the deck and I think this deck is very, very powerful. So do not underestimate how powerful this deck is. However, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content, just like this deck profile or combo videos or everything else you guys want to see will be on the channel. This week has been a week of deck profile. I hope you guys are enjoying this week, but without further ado, I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long So with that, let's get into the deck profile. All right So just before we get into the deck profile I do want to say I'm very excited to be profiling this deck because this is one of my favorite decks of all time This deck is super super fun to play and now finally we have a really competitive way of playing the deck And you can actually take this to a locals Maybe even a regionals and get proper results with this I think this deck is very very powerful very very underrated, but it can do a lot of things in today's format so let's start things off with three Crusadia Maximus, of course. This is one of the best Crusadia monsters in your deck. Now, for anyone who doesn't know this deck, I just want to say that quickly, every one of these have essentially the same effect, where they can special summon themselves to the field to a zone that a link monster points to, so they're all going to have this effect. Now, let's just say you normal summon one of them, you make a link one, which we're going to get into that. Then you can special summon essentially any other one, then link climb with this deck. So this deck link climbs really, really well. So Maximus is one of the better cards that you guys can play in this deck. Draco being essentially the best card in this deck. For anyone who doesn't know, Draco adds back a card from the graveyard when it's special summon. So this way, not only do you get a normal summon, but now it adds back the normal summon you used, which can now be special summon. So Draco is very, very important. So three Draco, three Arborea as well. Barboria has a graveyard protection effect, which is really, really nice. Three Reclusia. Reclusia is really good because it can pop cards, especially in a going second deck like this. And then two Leonis. Leonis is essentially the worst one in the deck. Leonis lets you do piercing damage. Now, yes, don't get me wrong, that can come up, which is why you still want to play two, but you don't need it as much as the other ones the other ones effects are just way too important oh and i completely forgot to mention but maximus has an effect where essentially if it's pointing to a monster that you control and the link monster battles it pretty much does double the damage that it would otherwise do so maximus is really good this is what pushes you to otk really really well and really really easily so that's it for the crusadia monsters then we're playing three crusadia power the only crusadia spell card we're playing you're not playing crusadia revival which is the field spell crusadia revival has a really cool effect where all your link monsters essentially gain through 500 attack and then is once per turn you can target a crusadia link monster you control and then this turn it can essentially attack all monsters your opponent controls so it's really really cool in that sense however the thing is power is just way too important in this format and what power does is it makes it so that your crusadia monsters are unaffected by card effects period other than their own card effects so essentially if you have power and you have a revival on the board you can't actually make use of the revival effect so that's why power is just way too important this is just going to ensure that everything goes through and ensure that all your combos are pretty much safe right and that's it for the crusadia cards and then we're pretty much playing another crusadia a card but this is just way way more powerful than a lot of them and that's parallel exceed so this is going to automatically get you two bodies on your side of the field it also allows you to chain block some of your cards which is very very important parallel exceed is one of the best cards in the deck this card also gives you access to your link fours very very easily so you definitely want to play playing three of this very very important that you see this once you see this in your opening hand with any crusadia monster you're in a really really good position now keep in mind this deck doesn't want to go second like i said right this is an otk based deck so for that reason we're playing a ton of board breakers so for the board breakers, we're playing three Godarla, three Jizukiru. The reason you're playing Godarla over something like a Gamma Seal and whatnot is because Barrier Statue and the Flunderies matchup is very, very relevant. So for that reason, you want to be playing the Wind Kaiju. But also, the reason it's nice to play these two is because at the end of the day, this deck wants to go to Equimax, and you're going to be placing the Kaiju in the zone that Equimax points to, so it's going to gain the attack of that monster anyways. So you don't have to specifically play Gamma Seal in this deck because the attack points don't really matter as much in this deck as it would in other decks that play Kaijus. In this one, it doesn't matter too much so you guys can play these big ones so Godala is really important Jizu Kiru as well so you're playing six kaijus then you're playing three lightning storm as well as one change of heart so this is your board breaker cards the nice thing about lightning storm is it also covers the back row matchup yes of course it covers monster boards as well but it's really nice because it covers the back row matchup as well for you and so here with this engine right here with these essentially 10 cards you're going to be breaking any single board change of heart is also really really good because in this deck obviously you're going to be wanting to link climb anyways so taking an opponent's monster to use as a link material is very very good but also change of heart is just one of those cards that if you see your opponent has a negate 
that your hand otherwise can't play through, you can activate the change of heart, force them to use that negate on the change of heart, and then all your other plays are going to go through. So the really nice thing about this deck is it has a lot of gas and it has a lot of things where it's kind of like, okay, let me force out your negates. If I don't break your negates with these cards, I'm going to force your negates out with other cards like your change of heart. You're going to see some other cards here that I'm going to talk about in a second, but you're going to be forcing out these negates and then you're just going to go OTK your opponent. This deck OTKs, it's it, honestly, it's probably the best OTK deck in the game, especially when you're playing it this way, because it's going to give you a lot of needed protection, but it's also going to be able to play through a lot of opponent's boards, which is very, very important. So that's it for the board breakers right here. There's 10 board breakers. That's all you really need. And then this is the engine that's really, really good, both going first and going second. So sometimes your opponent, especially games two and games three, are going to be like, wait, he's playing Crusadia. He wants to OTK. Let's force him to go first. The thing with this deck, the way it's built is it doesn't really matter. Of course, you still want to always go second because you want to OTK. However, going first is perfectly fine because we are playing the adventure package yes the adventure package is way too good you don't have any normal summon effects in this deck so the adventure package is way too powerful so three water enchantress three red of armesia we have one faithful adventure one draco back one griffin rider as well as one illegal knight now illegal knight actually makes this engine very very powerful because what illegal knight lets you do is it gives you another option going second that can actually help break your opponent's boards which is really really cool because it's like now we have built-in protection from something like nibiru which nibiru is the worst card against this deck like it's so so bad you automatically fold to this deck by the way i meant bad as in it's bad for crusadia and nibiru is amazing against this deck but it's the worst card if you're playing the crusadia because it's always gonna break all your boards so the thing is you want a way to play around nibiru and what that's what this essentially lets you do but it's really cool because if you don't read that your opponent has a nibiru if you don't think your opponent is main decking nibiru and whatnot especially in games ones and you're going second illegal knight is so so powerful for you because it's gonna help you break so many boards so on top of the 10 board breakers we have here we also have an searchable illegal knight so that's the deck it's 40 cards and the really nice thing that i like about this deck just before we go into the extra deck is that all of it synergizes super super well think about it you can give your opponent a kaiju and break one of their negates summon your illegal knight bounce those two cards bounce the kaiju and potentially another card to control back to their hand give them the illegal knight then if you have a draco back you can use the draco back to bounce the illegal knight back to your hand and now you've taken care of so many cards just with a legal knight a kaiju and, and a draco back you're essentially getting rid of everything your opponent controls which is so so powerful then what happens if you normal summon maximus and you start going climbing and you have full otk combo so that's why this deck is so powerful low key and i'm going to be honest with you this is the most competitive if you want to go to a locals like i said or regionals and you want to top those events you want to do all of those events this is the way to build the deck nowadays because this deck is so so powerful synergizes so so well going first going second you're gonna always have plays which is really really nice so then for the extra deck we are of course playing three crusadia magius now this is essentially the link climb dot deck so you're gonna go into magius with any of your first crusadia monsters this is how your combo essentially starts you normal summon a crusadia monster you go into magius you're gonna special summon another one from your hand you're gonna get magius effect to essentially search a monster from your deck to your hand then from that you're gonna use two monsters to go into your regulex regulex can search a spell card and that's really really good because you get to search your power and this pretty much makes it so that everything you want to do from this point on is going to go through you're playing three power so realistically there's very high chance that you're going to have a power in your hand before you even go into regulix but what regulix ends up letting you do is just guarantees you the power to your hand but regulix doesn't even matter that much i'm going to be honest with you it doesn't matter that much because the end goal is to make equimax and equimax gains the attack of all the combined monsters that it points to so essentially if you can get monsters pointing to its arrows the really nice thing funny enough is you can actually set it up to where the token from the right of Artemisia and the Griffin Rider or potentially the Illegal Knight, whatever you end up summoning, you can actually get these so that they point to the Equimax arrows. So now Equimax is going to gain a ton of attack just based off of that because it's going to be at least 4,000, 2,000 from the Griffin, 2,000 from the token. And then if you have a Kaiju, then you're going to put the Kaiju in the zone that you're going to be summoning the Equimax and then it's going to gain that attack as well. So you can imagine if you have those kind of cards on your side of the field, you're going to be making Equimax at like potentially 8k attack, which is very, very powerful at a minimum. So that's why Equimax is so so powerful this is your best otk card but of course if you first to go first or you potentially can't get to equimax or you don't think equimax enough to otk that's fine because you still have other utility cards in this extra deck we're talking about mech knight crusadia avermax avermax is one of those cards that's really really easy to make in this deck but on top of that a lot of your opponents won't have actual outs to avermax so avermax is really really powerful you have access code as another otk option for you now you're not really going to be making access code as often unless and this is what's really cool about this deck your opponents are going to be forced to try to negate the equimax whether it be through an imperm 
or a Baylor, or they're gonna try to negate the Equimax because as soon as your opponent lets the Equimax gain the attack, you're pretty much gonna be going for game anyways. So they have to have a Baylor, they have to have an Imprint to stop this, and you're like, okay, now let me just use one of the monsters plus an Equimax to go into access code, and boom, I have another OTK option. So that's why I think this deck is just so, so powerful and so, so cool. Then you have IP Masquerina, you're playing one Lina. Lina is really cool because you have your Maximus that can potentially make it, and Maximus into Lina, into one of the cards your opponent controls, helps you link climb as well. So that's really, really good. You're playing one Link Spider. Specifically, you're playing one Link Spider for the Nibiru token because, again, like I said, the worst thing you guys can run into in this deck is Nibiru, and Nibiru absolutely makes this deck fold. So you do want to be playing the Link Spider because it's going to give you an extra arrow so that if you have other Crusadia cards in your hand, you can still use those and try to Link Climb that way. So Link Spider is very important. Then you're playing Dugaris. If if this wasn't enough to OTK, then you're still playing Dugaris. You're playing Baguska, which is really nice when you're forced to go first. Baguska is very, very powerful. And then Tornado Dragon against any pesky back row matchup. So yeah, I think the extra deck is very, very simple. And this deck essentially just synergizes so well with each other. I'm, I'm just so excited that this deck can actually be played competitively in today's format. Don't be surprised if you guys see this starting to top events because it's picking up some heat. It can break through essentially any single board. And I just think this deck is both fun, competitive, and I think one of those things that you're gonna catch your opponent off guard and then you're just gonna have a really, really good time playing this deck. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Crusadia is one of those decks that I had a ton of fun playing. And then with this kind of build, you can actually be very competitive with it. Dare I say you can even go to a regionals and top a regionals with this kind of deck because this deck is very, very powerful. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.